Welcome to the Saving with Steve show where we talk about the ins and outs of money, pretty much everything in the sun relates to you having a happier, healthier relationship with money. My name is Steve Sexton, and I want to thank you for joining us today. Hey, we keep continue to expand here in the United States. We're expanding internationally. So we're very grateful that you're here with us and sharing us with your friends and family. You know, my, we had so much so much, so much people saying, hey, I want to go check out that Chris class episode. You know what? Chris was on episode 97. Okay. Uh, you can go to savingwithsteve.us. Again, that's savingwithsteve.us. And Chris Clash, he's the number one travel guru. He spent almost 20 minutes educating people on how to go about paying, you know what? Only, what is it? 10 cents on the dollar for travel. He went to the actual websites. He showed us websites where you can go to, and I checked it out when we were on the air. And you know what? You can actually go to a Hawaii hotel, resort hotel. It's like six, 700 bucks a night. And you know what? They can do it for 177. They can avoid resort fees, all that other stuff that goes along with it, the valet stuff, the everything. On top of that, he showed people how to travel for less. You know what? Saving, it was like, it was one of those things where he showed people actually how to pay only the taxes at the airport charges. So it was wonderful. Again, you want to go to Chris's class episode. It's the at savingwithsteve.us. And you know what? Chris is open to providing you, a, you know, a little... Uh, time so you can get his insights does it for free so you want to go check it out it's something you just got to mention you're with saving with steve now today we're going to be talking about the impact of social security and cost of living increase of 8.7 percent now that hasn't happened since 1981 so it's like 40 years in the making and I think it's important to understand what's going on here. So we're going to unpack that for you as well. Today we got something special in hope and Larry Ware you know what you just want to get ready to transform your relationship with money. Hope and Larry were our frugal living experts who've raised four sons debt-free, bought a house uh, uh, in cash, and they only lived off $40,000 a year. They've discovered the secret to spending less, saving more while living the spirit of joy and abundance. Together, they'll teach practical, frugal ways to over their 100,000 fans on their YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is called Under the Median. You really want to check that out. And they're going to be talking to us today about how to save money during the holidays. Hey, everybody. I, you know, it's my great pleasure to introduce you or welcome Hope and Larry Ware. Hope, Larry, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having us. Glad to be here, Steve. You know what? I'm really glad you're here because there is just so much happening in our world right now with obviously global, you know, instability. We got mm -hmm. stock markets that are going, you know, crazy they're volatile we've got you know what um inflation that's still going nuts and it looks like because of what's happening worldwide it's going to be with us for a lot longer and you know what and as a result we saw social security increase their cost of living allocation by 8.7 percent people are like yay yeah, right. which is awesome. <laughs> waiting for that well, not to be a De debbie downer here steve though <laughs> the reality that was just designed to help people keep up with cost of living yeah, yeah. you know purchasing power so that just helps us keep there, but we still got all this other stuff. So it's really important that people look at ways to stress their dollars, get more other dollars. And the cool thing about you guys is, you know what? It's wild. You actually raised four boys debt-free, which is like really hard to say. And, <laughs> and you paid for house cash. And, but more importantly, you did it all in less than $40,000 a year. Now being out in California, you know what, if you have $40,000 a year, you're living in a box by the freeway. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So we're blessed. So, we live in the Midwest and admittedly, housing prices in the Midwest are very, very reasonable. So right. that's no, no, I actually, I actually understand that, but everything's relative and I'm, I'm just yeah. making light of it. But the reality is doing that is something special. Oh, so, thank you. Uh, thank you. And you know what, you've also been, you know, sharing this on YouTube uh, with your YouTube channel under the median. Um, you know, there's over a hundred thousand people there. Uh, they watch it. I, remember, I bet they watch it religiously because I've seen some of those things going, oh my God, why well, didn't I think of that? So, but <laughs> now here, here we are, um, we're walking into the holiday season mm -hmm. and you know what we, we, you know, it's a great time with all that's going on to, you know, have some tips, uh, on how to, you know, what, save some money during the holiday. So, you know what, but first, 
I would really love to hear your story. How did you guys really get started in being frugal? Well, we got started being frugal because two months after we got married, I opened the bank account statement and we were flat broke. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> no, it was... It was forced upon us. It was either figure it out, figure it out fast, or you're in big trouble. And so he got home from work and I said, you know what? We got to figure this thing out. We got married thinking we'd live on love and found out it actually cost money to, <laughs> to live. And we didn't, you know, it's it's been really interesting because we, we have grown children who are in committed relationships and they started having these conversations about money and, uh, far, far, far earlier than we ever did. We started having money conversations because we figured out we didn't have any money mm -hmm. before we got married. Nothing. We didn't even discuss it. Mm -hmm. Didn't even talk about it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what's sort of interesting to see that passed down to our now grown children that they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we need to have these conversations a lot earlier than you guys did. But yeah, so we started figuring it out. And I worked in radio at the time. And at the time, there was a man named Larry Burkett that started a half hour program that talked about finances like Dave Ramsey. Yeah. Okay. Like the precursor to Dave Ramsey. Yeah. And, and it came out at two 30 and I would skew my lunch hour so that I could <laughs> sit not in the control room, sit in the lunch room for 30 minutes and listen to him and take notes. And that's where I really started figuring out finances. That's, you know what? It, it, it's so interesting that you say that, that your kids are doing what you're doing, right? What, what you used to do. And they're doing it younger. Yeah. And I always say this, this phrase when I, uh, I, I talk to uh, a lot of people and I've done the, the discussions with parents at schools and stuff like that. And I, I, I used to say, do you know what monkey see monkey do is? <laughs> I said, the things you do now, your kids are going to do when they grow up. Yes. And, and, and I'm gonna, not bragging, but I have two kids in college and they're watching their dollars. Uh, they're not spending frivolously. I have a son that'll come home to get his haircut because it's cheaper than paying $12. And yes. by the way, he's an engineer for all those engineers. You, you get that one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and my daughter who's studying to be a forensic accountant is basically realized that she hasn't worked. She, she, she's not working this year and she's created the whole budget and she freaked out at the beginning. Not sure she had had it, but when she got control of it, she's not worried anymore. Right. Yeah. That and, is. And you know what? She's not going worried about what, your friends are doing or anything like that or what they're buying she's just like hey does it make sense does it help me get to where i want to go and i i think mm -hmm. that's really wonderful and the parents set that up and i give kudos to you for that so but that that's a big lesson to learn nowadays it is it's yeah. very important especially with the inflation going on and the prices going up uh, if you're debt free and you have a set budget you can live with peace of mind even through tough times mm -hmm. and i think What's that's so important my, oh, my lovely ahead. phrase, I'm sorry, go ahead, Hope. Um, so, I mean, you know, in reference to frugality, I, I think one of the other things is that frugality is vastly misunderstood. People equate mm. frugality with deprivation. And we say this all the time. Frugality is absolutely not a doubt about deprivation. You can make $200,000 and still be frugal. That's a good thing. You can make mm -hmm. $50,000 and be frugal. But there's no difference between the frugality. Frugality is choosing when, where, and how you're going to spend that money. It's not depriving yourself of everything that you want. It's deciding what you want and figuring out how you're going to get there. I, I would call it precision planning. I, actually, I, lo I love what you just said. It's about planning what you want and how you're going to get there. But more importantly, planning. And mm -hmm. just a lot of people just don't. And yeah. uh, I, I run into retirees all the time where we're talking about, okay, so you know, could you write down your expenses? Really? Okay. Uh, do you know how much you spend on a monthly basis? No. And when we sit down and they start talking about it, they realize they're spending at the, almost the amount that they make, um, but they're also not paying attention to it. And then I, and they, you know, they pull out the, the bank statements and stuff like that. And they said, Oh, this, this food delivery services, we haven't used that in six months, but they're still paying $30 a month. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know she actually had four different workout apps on there that was $50 and all the, it was just crazy. I was just like, wow. oh my gosh, we actually found $700 that they eliminated from their expenses just by looking at them. Wow. And that's good. I have those conversations all the time. And that's why I thought what you're, what you're talking about here, I, I, I kind of preached to the choir 
you know how kids hear you all the time and they're like, yeah, that's mom and dad. But somebody else comes in there and says the same thing. They're like, oh my God, aha moment. <laughs> so no offense, but you're here for the aha moment. <laughs> okay, we're down for that. We are so down for being your aha moment. <laughs> so um, what I would like to do is since we're walking into the holiday season, let's talk about some basic things that people can do to get prepared for the holiday season. And we'll probably get to a couple of just before the break. So let's go ahead and start with that. You know what, um, how can, you know, the, the, the big question is everybody has those holiday traditions that gift giving and all that. So, you know what, how, you know, can we do that with that, with costing little about little or no money? All right. So the first thing you're going to do is, first of all, not assume that a tradition is a tradition because it costs a lot of money. A tradition is a tradition because it it connects your family in meaningful ways. And that doesn't have to cost a lot of money. We got really good raising four kids on an income which was consistently under the U.S. average income. We got really good at creating those moments where things became really special, not because we spent money, but because we spent time together. And so we're going to run through, these are our top five ways that you can find free or nearly free ways to um, express traditions around the holiday season in your area. All right. And then we'll tell you, as we go through, we'll tell you some of the things we found. So the first thing you're going to start with is, does your area have like a community calendar, an online community calendar? Um, start with your convention and visitors bureau. Uh, I signed up for my convention and visitors bureau. They're like, do you want like a weekly email that tells you what's going on in our, in our area? I'm like, well, shoot, yeah. So they, and there's a lot of things on there that are like really high priced and moderate priced. And then you find some things you're like, are you serious? That's free. Really? I cannot believe they're doing that for free. Mm -hmm. And we found one of our absolute favorite family traditions through the convention and visitors bureau and that event was it's just a local event it's done downtown we live in in peoria so it's called you'll love peoria you'll spell y-u-l-e and it's where businesses downtown will open up and they'll have talent there refreshments uh they'll have uh, in fact one of the local churches has full-blown good baked food and and they show part of their play and they invite you back to their christmas play so it's a really fun event. It's very well attended. They have a trolley car that runs around between the different places. If it's real cold, you can kind of get warmed up. Mm -hmm. A very fun, free event. And our kids loved it. And they want us to do it every year. Our grown kids call us to make sure that, you know, they're getting this on the calendar. The things we're sharing with you, these are the things our grown kids in their mid-20s are like, now, when is that? When are we going to do that? That's one of those things that the, you'll like pure. We joke that it's like more sugar than they consume in like a month, <laughs> in like four hours. And, and it's a blast because some of them like, like there's, there's like this inverse ratio between the amount of sugar they eat and how active they are in the sing-alongs, you know, <laughs> you get some sugar and you're like, yeah, I'll sing that song. <laughs> but I mean, it's a blast. It's so much fun. So the other thing you might want to do is check with local churches. There are some local churches that put on some programs in the Christmas season. I'm telling you, they are top notch. So we looked around one year and we found out one of our churches uh, in the area was going to do a mall in the night visitors. It's actually a Christmas opera. Mm -hmm. And then we found out the lady that was um, conducting it uh, went to school with Larry, went to high school with him. She's like, hey, one of your boys want to come be in a mall in the night visits? We're like, sure. So he got to be in this Christmas opera and this lady that was conducting it was, she'd been on Broadway. So she was really- New York, much. New York yeah. Broadway. Oh, wow, cool. And, yeah. yeah, and so she like worked with him and they provided everything. It cost him absolutely nothing. And we got to go to the performances for free and see him in a mall and night visitors. One of our local parks, it's called Forest Park. It's a park with trails that go through the woods. They have a walking candlelight uh, thing for Christmas. In their visitor center, they'll have live talent playing. You can sit and kind of warm up and listen to them. When you get out on the trail, they have hot chocolate. It's all lit by those luminary candles. Mm -hmm. Really fun, free event. You know, sugar, you know, is predominantly featured. <laughs> is there a theme thing. here called sugar? <laughs> yeah. So, so other than that, though, our, our other tip is to make sure that you are creating traditions. Oh, before we go into the next tip, I've got to take a quick break. <gasps> okay, so everybody go, go. stick with us. You want to be here for this. These are wonder hol wonderful holiday tips. So <laughs> stick with us. We're going to be right back with more Saving with Steve. I, I didn't want to stop you, but you know. <laughs> 
You know, to. go, go, go. If we're taking too long, just tell us. Because this oh, is no, the last no, thing. you're perfect. You're perfect. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Mm. So Cameron, we just finished segment one uh, with Hope and Larry Ware. <laughs> oh my goodness, that went fast. Segment two right here. I oh know my gosh. Are There's good. no way we'll get through all of our seven points. All right, we're going to go we, fast. We go, we go as best as we can. So, <laughs> and if not, we'll have you back again. So here we go. <laughs> Uh, and Cameron, we're going to start in five, four, three, two, one. Hey, welcome back to the Saving with Steve show where we talk about the ins and outs of money. You know what? If you would like to follow us, you can go to the savingwithsteve.us website and look at all 100 episodes. You can also go to Saving with Steve, uh, Facebook at Saving with Steve for behind the scenes, guest gifts, all sorts of stuff. Uh, and with that, I just want to get back to Hope and Larry where they're giving us some great advice. Now, you know what the cool thing you talked about is this family experiences. Mm -hmm. After all the stuff is gone, after it's all thrown away, everybody remembers experiences. And Absolutely. Yes. you know what? Um, what is it? I was, I had a brother pass away. That was a younger brother pass away a couple of years back. And at his uh, eulogy or his memorial, everybody remembered all the cool experiences, not the stuff he gave, but all the cool experiences that he did. And when it comes to Christmas and uh, holiday season, I agree with you. It's all about the experiences because you know what? That shirt's going to get old. It's going to fall. You're going to throw it away. You know, some of the toys are going to get broken. Who cares? It's the experience with the family that everybody remembers. It's his laughs. It's the crying, the whole shot. So I want to thank you for sharing that with everybody. So let's jump back into that second tip. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to take things that you would be doing normally anyway and create traditions out of those. Even the decorating the Christmas tree, we do it every single year, like the Friday after Thanksgiving. It became a thing with the kids getting together and figuring out how to decorate the house. Um, we have traditions associated with exactly what goes on the tree. Who gets to put the first ornament on there? My my 82 year old mother came came over this year and she put the first ornament on. That was huge for the kids, for grandma to put the first ornament on. Anything like that can become that meaningful tradition. Watching campy Christmas movies. <laughs> we have a list, Steve. We have and a list. We, okay, cool. We, do. we watch them. We won't give them to you, but we watch them every year. Like mm -hmm. these same campy Christmas movies. And the kids will like say, okay, what dates are we doing this on? We pop popcorn and we sit around popcorn, hot cocoa and watch the campy Christmas music movies. That doesn't cost you a thing. But it's those moments that you're creating together. That's what counts. Yep. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I, I love that because it, it's, it's so interesting. I, I see parallels with my family because we kind of do some of the same things because my wife always loves the Christmas movies. And yeah, there's popcorn involved. Although it's not hot chocolate, it's wine, but it's popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> so. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about what's next. Um, how about shopping early? What's so important about shopping early? You know, one of the things that we like to do is shop right after Christmas for the next year, or at least begin that process. So you go to the stores, especially January, end of January, you'll get some really great discounts, a lot of closeouts, maybe 55%, 75% off. We'll look for things that we can put in our gift closet to save for the following year. And throughout the year, we do a lot of shopping. We like to buy used items for each other. We just love uh, getting things from thrift stores or Goodwill and uh, finding some really nice items. So if you shop early, you have plenty of time to look for those things. You're not in a rush trying to do the last minute thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing you want to do is make sure that you have a complete Christmas list. And that list is prioritized. Prioritized is like one of my favorite words in the <laughs> English dictionary. I'm not kidding you. Prioritized means that the most important things to you are at the top of that list. Any list you make really should be prioritized. So the people that you know for sure that you're going to buy for, your immediate family, clearly they're going to be at the top of the list. Now, the people at the bottom of the list, you're not going to spend as much money on them. And it's not that they're less important that they're at the bottom of the list. It's that it makes it super easy to look at those people and group them together, put a bracket around their names and say, all right, all of these people are going to get a DIY thing. I'm going to make them something specific. So you know that those people are all going to get the same gift, like teacher mm -hmm. gifts. I always use that as an example. We got to give gifts to our teachers. Amen. You know what I'm saying? They work mm -hmm. hard. And 
So all of the teachers are going to get basically the same gift, but it makes it easy for you visually. Your eye is going to see that. And when you assign a monetary amount to it and say, this is how much I'm going to spend on each person, it gives you a goalpost for how much money you're going to spend on those gifts. The worst thing in the world is to walk out without a list, without any ideas and without any budget. Yeah. So if you if you plan, then you can kind of keep that that spending more strategic. Another thing that we do is we save Amazon gift cards that we get throughout the year. So we can use those, say, in November to get things that our kids have already given us on a list that they'll compile from Amazon so that we know exactly what they want, what to get them. And then we've pretty much got it paid for as well. So your kids can go onto their Amazon account and they create a wish list and they can label it Christmas 2022. They make that list shareable. They send you a link to it. You go right to their list and that list is clickable. So whatever they want, you click on it. Amazon will take you right to that item. You can click on it, put it in your cart and you know you've just gotten them something they really wanted. I didn't even know that. I didn't know anybody can create a wish list on Amazon. That's pretty smart, Amazon. <laughs> yeah, all, all you need is your own Amazon account and you can create mm -hmm. your own wish list and make it, it's either private or shareable. Just make sure you make it shareable and there'll be a link associated with it. You can pass that on to your friends and loved ones. Does, does Amazon send you a little link and say, hey, guess what? It's cheaper now. <laughs> oh, actually. Okay. So this is how you find out what goes on sale at Amazon. Camel, 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 camel camel.com. Okay. I know it's a weird, the first time I heard this is I'm like, what? Camel, camel, camel. I, I thought you were start talking about smoking. <laughs> I know. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's a weird code, right? Camel, camel, camel.com is a website that tracks Amazon prices. And you can go on there. You create a free account on camel, 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 and tell them what you're looking for. So let's say you have decided, Steve, you want an instant pot. We know you do, but <laughs> okay. you don't want to pay full price or even close to full price for that instant pot. So you're going to tell Camel, 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 watch, you're going to put it on your watch list. And once Amazon drops the price of that instant pot, Camel, Camel, Camel is going to send you an email and say, hey, Steve, Amazon just dropped the price of that item you were looking for. They do all the watching for you. Oh, that's so cool. That's, that's wonderful. I got, you know, that's, that's, that's one tip I'm telling my wife. <laughs> there you go. Just go home and go, honey, camel, camel, camel. <laughs> yeah. That, that, might talking about? More, that we really, really, that might need more, more purchases where she says we really, really needed it. <laughs> yeah. And, and you don't have to walk a mile for that camel. Oh. <laughs> okay, Larry, <laughs> you're in the bad pun house. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about simplifying entertainment. All right. So for entertainment, we love to do themed pot lux. We've done them for years. Mm -hmm. All right, Larry, what kind of pot lux have we done? Do you remember? Well, um, you know, I can't come up with one. <laughs> All right. So we have done taco bars, baked potato bars. We have done salad bars, appetizer bars, dessert bars, and everybody brings their favorite X, Y, Z, right? And then you can bring a favorite beverage to drink. And basically it's like, a, it's, it's a potluck, but it's all around one centralized theme. And we have so much fun doing this with friends. And the other thing we add, so we do these theme potlucks throughout the year with friends, but at Christmas time, we add something else that makes it even more cool. And that is the white elephant oh, gift yes. exchange. Oh, I love it. Those are so much fun. Oh my gosh. One year we went to Salvation Army and we found this. Okay. So you remember the, the leg lamp from yeah. the Christmas story? It wasn't the leg lamp, but it was a big lamp shaped like a woman's high heeled shoe. Okay. And you should have seen those teenage girls like stealing that white elephant <laughs> gift from each other. It was so much fun. We found so many fun items. I think we spent a total of like $13 on all the gifts. We bought a lot of gifts. Yeah. So the that. goal is though, it's got to be something that's like lightly used yeah. for the white elephant gift exchange. Mm -hmm. So everybody like goes to their favorite secondhand shops and looks for really, really fun things for the white elephant gift exchange. I think that, I think that's wonderful. We do it in a different way. We call it the gourmet group. So somebody has a, like a German, Italian, whatever theme, and they yeah. make a main dish and, and then everybody is given a, a recipe for a side dish and dessert. They obviously bring their own drinks, but we also add a game into it. 
So nice. whether it be Bunko or Farkle or Monopoly or whatever <laughs> it is, uh, we do that. Uh, in fact, one time, everybody, we decided we were going to have an eating competition. So everybody had to bring their own little thing that they had to speed eat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fun. oh gosh, what fun is that? <laughs> that was so funny because you only like there's only one person won their one event, you know, because they they practice eating that one thing. That they, yeah. <laughs> People discount these experiences though, and they shouldn't, because with good friends, I mean, how much fun is it to oh, just yeah. sort of share your favorite Italian recipe or your favorite Mexican recipe, your favorite Chinese recipe? You bring what you know is really awesome in your family lives and you share it with other people you love. Mm -hmm. People, people get too hung up on the feeling like if they're the hostess, they have to make everything or make everything perfect. The house has yeah. to be perfect. Yes. The decoration has to be perfect. When we did one of these potlucks, we did a travel around where we did uh, the appetizers somewhere, the main dish somewhere, dessert. I forget what we had at our house, but it was cold. We actually had it out in our backyard on the patio. We had fires going in our fire pit. And one of our tables has a, a fire pit built into the middle. Mm -hmm. And we all just cuddled around the fires. And we just had so much fun. Once again, didn't cost <laughs> a lot of money, but a lot of good memories. Yeah, you know, I think that's wonderful. Uh, and uh, that's, that's really, really great. Now, um, one of the things that everybody needs to stop is, and you call it the comparison game. Mm -hmm. So let's help, help, help people understand that. And I, I think there's a, that's a keeping up with the Joneses type thing. Mm -hmm people need to stop believing that gifts have to be the biggest or the most expensive to be the most meaningful. Uh, one of the things that we encourage people to do is keep a running list. Um, let's say mom sometime in the middle of June says, you know, I'd really, oh, those new, those new things. This, uh, I just saw this advertised, I don't know, shopping network or whatever. And, and they're really cool. And and by the time it gets to November and you're shopping for mom, you will have completely forgotten what it was that mom, what mom say that was really cool back in June. You remember, <laughs> keep a running list of people's favorite colors, their hobbies, yes. gift ideas, because that will help you also by the time you get to Walmart at 10 p.m. <laughs> on the 23rd. We don't want you doing that. We want you at Walmart long before that or wherever else you're shopping. And you're going to go and you're going to have a list of things you know these people are going to appreciate. You know, one of the most special gifts my family ever bought me was oh I, I collect old radios and televisions. I used to collect them a lot more than I do now. But they found an old 1953 Zenith transoceanic radio at a thrift oh. store. And they all pitched in. And by golly, the thing actually worked. That was my favorite Christmas gift. Once again, they didn't pay a lot for it, but it was so fun because it was right up my hobby alley. I thought you were going to say you're Robbie the robot, which the kids. Oh, also well, <laughs> that, that was definitely at the top too. You yeah. know what, guys, this has been going really, really well. We're going to, we've got about 30, 45 seconds left with our time. How can people get a hold of you? How can they connect with you to, to learn these things that you're talking about today? Because I know there's a whole bunch more. And how can people go see your YouTube channel? Okay, you can find us on YouTube at Under the Median, M-E-D-I-A-N. Or you can find us at our website, underthemedian.com. Wonderful. That's great. Hey, look, I want to thank you so much. You know what? We're probably going to have you back again because you've been so much fun. And this goes like that. And I always <laughs> yes. know when we have good guests when that happens. So look, you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy your holiday season. And again, thanks for being part of Saving with Steve today. We thank love you. That. Thank you. For thank you so us. much, Steve. All right. Be safe. Be healthy. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> hey, welcome back to the Saving with Steve show where we talk about the ins and outs of money. Hey, I want to truly thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you letting your friends and families know about the show. Hey, all the replays are available at savingwithsteve.us. If you're enjoying the stories of helpful information, hey, check out our affiliates at UK Health Radio, AMFM 247, UK uh, BBS Radio and Talk Radio New York City. If you'd like to check out other episodes, because we just finished episode 100, hey, you can always go to uh, savingwithsteve.us. And if you have comments, would like to see somebody on the show, we'd be more than happy to accommodate you. Please go to viewers at Saving with Steve and just send us a little email. Tonight, you know what? I just want to talk one brief little few minutes here about Social Security. Hey, so Social Security Administration just announced the cost of living allocation for Social Security. What you don't, what most people don't realize about Social Security is this. It's a guaranteed income 
one of the few guaranteed incomes that lasts as long as you do. It's one of the few guaranteed incomes or the only one of the few guaranteed incomes that will not get adjusted when the stock market goes down. Okay. And one of the few guaranteed incomes that will help you keep up with purchasing power. And that's just what happened. The cost of living allocation went up 8.7%. That hasn't happened like that since 1981. So it's been over 40 years. Now, here's one of the big things. Really interesting. 70% of claimants take Social Security early. And they typically do this because they think Social Security is going to go away or they worked really, really hard and they want to get their money now. And or many people think that if they take the money now, they're going to be able to buy more wealth. But the reality, according to studies like the one from CNBC, Mary Beth Franklin and others, you know what? That's not quite the case. In fact, because of people taking it early, they're giving up on $3.4 trillion of money that could be in their bank accounts. Okay. In fact, studies show that 57% of people that took Social Security early could have had a larger income and had more assets if they just waited a few years. And you know what? There's a lot of people that retire at 62. They say, hey, I'm going to wait five years, take Social Security. You have to look at that as well, because you got to remember, if you're at 62, you're getting $2,000 a month. It's $24,000 a year for four years or five years. That's over $100,000. What will that $100,000 mean to you when you're 85, 86, 87, when you might need it for health? So it's important to take a look at these and take a look at, you know what? I understand if, you know what, your income's quite tight and you need to take it, gosh, you got to take it. If your family is one of those situations where they don't live past 70, 65, 70, 71, 72, 73, hey, you might want to take it at 62, otherwise you won't get full benefit. But if you're in a situation, it's important to take into account longevity, your genetics. It's important to take account how much you're going to need later on. It's important to take a look at advice from an advisor based off your truths, what's important to you, your goals, to see where that income, that guaranteed income is going to be, because it's one of those guaranteed ones, and you need to maximize it like you maximize your pension. And you know what? You also want to set up your spouse because there's ways you can take your social security or not. So it's really important that you do that. Hey, I want to thank you all for hanging out with here today on Saving with Steve. Again, we're talking about ins and outs of money. We want to make sure it's the best for you. As we move into this holiday season, we're going to have more things for you to take a look at uh, and talk about. So if you want to find some things or you want to hear about something, whether it be travel, tourism, whatever, Hey, just go to viewers at savingwithsteve.us. Send us a little email. We'll make sure it gets on the air. We'll, we'll plan for it. We've got some real cool things coming up here in the future. We have um, Nicole coming on here. She's going to be talking. She's, she owns a company called Massologist. And basically, she's talking about mixing cocktails for the holiday season. And you know what? She's, it's just a wonderful thing. She does it for women because women are uh, like cocktails. So we're going to have her on. We're going to have more people on with travel. We're going to talk about money like we usually do. And with that, I want to say thank you for being with us here on Saving with Steve. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Have a wonderful holiday season. And we'll look forward to seeing you next Thursday. Bye-bye.